Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for Simba's this event. Today, we're going to have a Meet the Mentee session, and uh, we're very glad that you're here. So um, to begin with, I, I think um, some of us you know, may not have had or uh, watched the videos of the in-conversation with the artists. Uh, and so this is a chance to get to know the, the mentees, people who have produced the artwork and maybe to hear a bit more about their internal uh, processes, how they came to produce these pieces and what agony they've been through, you know, what joy, uh, what experiences, and then you can shoot your questions at them. Uh, so to begin, I would like to ask Nicole to share because, you know, she, she, she has been very much uh, working behind the scenes and I think, you know, very, very, one of the more, the least, the lesser seen, persons. So Nicole, if you're ready, you can take it away. You can uh, share with us. Okay. Hold on. Uh, where do I go? Okay. Do you guys see the, the share screen of the exhibition page? Yes. 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 yes? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, I'll share a little bit about um, my group. Um, so my mentor is Eleanor Winter. And the other mentee in my group is Dorothy and Nicole. So we kicked off our meeting knowing that we were doing traditional scripts um, as our baseline. But I, we didn't actually know how things would turn out over the weeks because um, after a couple of mentoring calls, I realized that Dorothy and my approach to art has been quite different. <laughs> so um, in the first few calls, uh, you see how Dorothy will be sharing so many test paintings. But I don't, I don't really have that much to share at the start because my approach has, um, for the beginning stage of my artwork creation were a lot of um, note-taking. I take down a lot of notes. Um, I write down my feelings, my thoughts, um, even writing down very small little things that I see um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, um, this evening, in my evening walk, I actually saw um, very, very bright colored orange mushrooms growing out of a log. <laughs> and I, I noted that down on, on my note app. Uh, so I do take down little notes of things that catches my eye. And I don't actually know how it will be applied to my artwork later on. But these notes kind of make sense later on when I was, when I'm trying to put all these things together. But um, at the note taking stage or ideation stage, it didn't really kind of make sense. So, um, so from there, I went on to visit museums. Um, I went on to, uh, I did a couple of heritage walks as well in our local, local heritage walks in Singapore. Um, I also checked out a couple of interesting buildings um, that's related to the local culture. So those are the things I've noted down in the initial stages of my artwork creation. Um, yeah, so in the first few calls, when Eleanor was asking us what we wanted to create, I didn't know what I wanted to do, honestly. I was quite kind of confused. Um, because I do know definitely I'll be using traditional script as my base. But what do I do from there? That's something I had to kind of like search around and explore. So, um, I kind of settled down on wanting to do something related to my culture and personal experience. Um, so during the call, I talked about a bit of my time in Australia because I spent 10, 10 years there. So it's it's a huge part of my of my um, of my life to me. And I also spent my growing up years in Singapore. So um, Eleanor actually asked me do I feel more Singaporean or Australian? And I felt very confused. <laughs> there, was one, there was one question that she, she, she threw at me and I was very confused at that time because I didn't know how to answer. Um, yeah, so it has got to do with you know, self-identity at that point. And I, at the spur of the moment, I told her, okay, I, maybe I feel more Singaporean because my family is in Singapore. <laughs> But I, you know, in, in my heart, I do know that how important my time in Australia has been and has shaped me um, to be the person I am today. So 
I wanted to incorporate a little bit of that in my pieces with the Western arts. Uh, so yeah, so I, I left it there because, and I thought it was one of the turning points in my, maybe my mentorship, mentoring journey. Yeah, mentoring journey. Um, and there was also a, a, a period of time where I uh, spent seven days alone in an isolation facility because I was a close contact to a COVID case. So I had a lot of time to think on my own as well. <laughs> um, and Dorothy, uh, when she was talking about her pieces during our calls, she said um, she's going to use the word never in her artworks. Never something, something. Never something, something. And although the, the word has this very negative connotation to it, um, you know, she was sharing how it's, it's very powerful and she wants to um, focus on that in her pieces. Um, and that's where, stops, uh, that's where in the mentoring call, it kind of stopped me there. And I thought, okay, maybe I need to start searching for the text to write. Because the, the text has to be, um, you know, relatable to me. I have to got to feel like it's something I want to be um, writing for the exhibition as well. And that's where I started um, researching the different texts. Um, yeah, so during my time alone in the um, in quarantine, I thought about my fa a lot about my family because they are not there with me. Because um, during that time when uh, how Singapore managed COVID was, if you were close contact to a COVID case, they would put you in an isolation facility that's not in your house. They have to be placed somewhere else. Um, yeah, so I thought a lot about my family, and um, the first piece. Sorry, you guys. The first piece that, that started everything was this one, which is tell all the truth but tell it slant. And um, this is a poem by Emily Dickinson. Um, it caught my eye because it reminded me of my grand aunt. Um, she's like a mother to me because I grew up, I grew up um, with my parents not at home often. So my grand aunt is, is always the one at home looking after us. Um, so I thought this poem actually expresses really well how I received the news of my grand aunt's passing when I was in Australia, because no one actually um, told me um, immediately after she passed. What's well, after maybe you know a couple of months? Then I, I realized that she passed on. So, um, but I do know that with our family, the way that we work in our family unit and the culture as well. Um, Sometimes we we don't really say things in entirety. It's like a it's like a um we do say things with a slant with very good intentions. So I there's one more minute. Beth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I never really kind of um made a fuss over it, but I thought it was really nice. I was able to share it, share it through my art. And so that this is the first piece that sparked the whole series. Um and then the next one I did was loss. So this piece here is, um, I, I actually did this design based on a shop house design, Peranakan shop house design in Singapore. Um, and the floral borders were actually from altar offering tablecloths design. So I wanted this to shape like a tombstone. Um, and it, it's how I grieved. So I wanted the death element in this, this piece. So it worked out like a, a tombstone um, design on this whole thing. Yeah. Then um, the next piece I did was this one. Onwards. So this one reflects more like my, um, my current approach to life. And I removed a lot of the Chinese elements in it because and I, I did kind of leave some at the corners with the floral designs because they were from altar tablecloths as well. Um, but they're mostly the, the Western style, traditional drawings around it. And I chose this poem partly because um, Dorothy was talking about how um, she's using never in her pieces. And it stopped me on my tracks when I was um, looking for a poem to write that it will never come again. And so I started reading up on the, you know, the, the analysis of this poem and I thought, hmm, it kind of makes sense, you know. It's how I, I'm. It's how I'm approaching my life, um, onward. So, 
yeah, so this is how um, we have the three pieces for my exhibition. <laughs> um, is the time good? <laughs> all good? Yeah, I think that's all for on my end. Beautiful. Um, I just I just wanted to to say that you know for for Nicole to process very deep emotions through these pieces, you know, the loss of loved ones or family relationships, you know, I, I think during the mentoring journey, um, I, I came to know a part of Nicole that I never knew before. And somehow that that kind of like, it touched me very deeply. And then when I saw her art, I, I, I felt the emotions behind it, you know, and I saw how she was um, searching for her center, how, how, how she's expressing herself through all these beautiful, um, her choice of imagery, her choice of, you know, the styling of her art. You know, it's just very, very beautiful for me. Yeah. yeah Thanks, thank Lee. Yeah. Does anyone have any um, comments or questions for the poll? Okay, no. Okay, then. I do, I do. Oh, you do? Okay, yes. Please, Nicole, it's so good to actually see you finally here talking about <laughs> your art pieces. Um, when I looked at it, I knew there was something behind it. But, you know, um, also one of your posts on Instagram where you mentioned about how you went through the grief. Um, but, you know, looking at it now, like Dorothy said, I could feel it. I could see, you know, that uh, what you were trying to do with each of these pieces. I'm, I'm so happy that you know, I could hear you talk this and, you know, uh, take us through or walk us through what you've made. It's gorgeous. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Thank we're, you all, we're all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Much strength to you. I hope you found your center. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we can move on to uh, Susan. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Um, First off, I'd like to thank Tony. Uh, she's been really generous with her time, with her knowledge, with her expertise. Um, you know, it's really wonderful to have someone to bounce ideas off of. Um, I think people may not know this, but Tony was really, really busy doing the eight months of our mentorship, and so she made time for us. Uh, she was happy to demonstrate things to answer any questions we had. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, <laughs> so coming into the journey, uh, I, I started off, I'm not new to gilding. I started gilding in, in 2017, 2018. So for me, it wasn't about how to gild, but what I can do to push myself a little bit more. So I took, uh, I pushed myself in various ways. One of it was, you know, if you know anything about gilding, you'll know that it's very difficult to gild fine lines. So I chose to gild very thin lines in the piece that's called um, Dreams. I did a floral border. Uh, the lines, the floral vine is about one mm thick. Uh, and then I had the buds and the florals, which were sculpted in. So it's difficult to gild fine lines because for whatever reason, um, there's not enough medium for the gold to stick onto it. So that was a challenge I set myself and I was quite happy that that worked. Uh, the other thing was I have never actually uh, done a, an extensive calligraphy piece. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I've never done an illuminated piece with extended calligraphy before because in the past, my, my, I've always looked at illuminated letters from the old, um, the old Bibles, the old Psalters, um, and they were all very heavy, very elaborate. And because I did more pointed pen, it didn't marry well. But in the last couple of years, I've been doing more broad edge calligraphy. So I was able to do a bit more calligraphy with the illumination. So I did that with um, the piece uh, Dreams, as well as Hope is the Thing with Feathers. It's the uh, accordion album, if you remember. So that one, I chose the, 
the initial, the first, uh, the first letter of each stanza is illuminated. And this is a throwback to how illuminated letters were actually used in the old Psalters and illuminated scripts um, that the scribes would write the text, leave a little bit of space, and then the illuminators would come in and fill in the illuminated letter to indicate the start of, ah, thank you, <laughs> to, to indicate the start of a new paragraph. So uh, that was the other challenge I put myself. And then the next thing I wanted to do was, uh, I wanted to gild on something that was not on a flat piece of paper. Um, I did a bit of it with the accordion album, uh, but it's, I, if I had more time, I was going to explore book binding, but I will tell you later, I ran out of time. So um, I decided to do this piece where I thought I would uh, gild on material that no one has ever done before, or I've never seen anyone do before. So the theme running through my pieces is nature. And in four of the five pieces, uh, it's about wings, wings. So I thought that a dragonfly is really beautiful. The wings, if you've seen it, is transparent with beautiful veins, which lends itself really easily to gilding. So I thought, okay, I don't want to gild on paper. So what can give me a sort of translucent quality? And I thought, well, calf skin vellum could. So I found a thin piece of calf skin vellum and I gilded on that. Then I needed something to gild the body of the dragonfly on. And um, I was trying to think what I could do because you don't want it to be something really alien. So I took a walk in my garden and I found a pebble and I thought, well, why not? So I experimented gilding on the pebble. Uh, I wasn't sure if gesso would work on a pebble. I asked Tony and Tony said, give it a try, you know? So I did. And fortunately, the gesso stuck to the pebble. And then I wanted to use a silver leaf because, you know, dragonflies come in beautiful colors. I didn't want it to be a gold dragonfly. I wanted it to be a colored dragonfly. So I used silver leaf. And silver leaf doesn't play nice on gesso either. But I was very lucky it worked. So I got the gesso to work on the pebble, the silver leaf to work on the molded gesso. And then I got the wings to look like they were taking off. So this is a piece that I'm really proud of. Um, so I, okay, the challenge that faced me in this was that uh, I didn't have time <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, for whatever reason, in the lead up to the exhibition, I was inundated with work and other things got in the way. So if you look at my pieces, I did four of my five pieces in five weeks in leading up to the exhibition. Um, the first piece, which I had started on, was only halfway done. So I actually did four and a half pieces in five weeks. And if you count in the collaboration I did with Tony and Artie, I did five and a half pieces in five weeks. So yes, uh, yeah. So if you know anything about gilding, it's a 12th century art. You have to make the gesso. You can't buy gesso. Any self-respecting gilder will not buy gesso. Anyway, it's not available for sale. So you have to make it. And then you turn it into little, little bits of uh, uh, tablets like these. And then you have to dissolve it once it's ready into a little container like this with water. And then you brush it on and then you let it dry. So, but the thing with gesso is it's really dependent on humidity, on temperature, and a lot of prayer. So you, you could have the same gesso, the same humidity, the same temperature, and you would do it on the same piece of art. One will stick to gold and one will not stick to gold. Ah, the gold will not stick on it. It's just like that, okay? So um, I, 
it, it's it's a very technical thing. This this whole gilding thing, like you have to watch the humidity. If it's too humid, um, the gold will stick on, but it'll never shine. If it's not humid enough, the gold will never stick on. So even after you've stuck on the gold and you think it's all fine and dandy, it may not burnish well. So there were a lot of challenges with this, uh, but I managed to put up a few pieces for the exhibition. Um, yeah. Would I, would I recommend that uh, people do this in five weeks? No. Um, there are pieces in there I'm not happy with. You know, if I had more time, I would have redone them. But it is what it is. Uh, yeah, and I managed to put up pieces. Yep. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, we were all holding our breath for you because we knew that you were swamped. You know, during the, the, the festive season, Christmas, New Year, Chinese New Year, and so on. Yeah, so that's, it's very beautiful. Thank yeah. you. But I never doubted that you could produce what you wanted to. <laughs> I have absolute confidence too. Yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah. more than what I have in myself. I know yeah. Tony was saying, I think we, you can do two pieces. That would be good. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and do more than two. I will try to do more than two. Yeah, okay. yeah I, was, I was trying to take the pressure off, really. <laughs> Don't give her any more pressure. It's just, you know, you've got enough to do as it is. But the work you did was just so beautiful, actually. The best gilding I've ever seen you do. Oh, so, thank you. Wow. Yeah, good job. Thanks. Lovely. I knew you could too. I knew I knew you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> like I kept I kept messaging Sue. Sue was like, I doubt, I don't know. And she was swamped with work, so much, so much work. Oh my god. I wonder, you know, but I knew she could and what an amazing job. Wow. You people have more faith in me than I do in myself. <laughs> you've, seen, you've seen how you work, Sue. So it's, yeah, it's very disciplined. Uh, very intentional and very disciplined. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'm going to open this up to the rest who, who the exhibited uh, artists. Maybe, Lisa, you want to go next? Talk about your mentoring journey. Yes. Anything yeah. you want to share? Yes, I want to say that it was um, an, amazing, an amazing time we had with Marina and Judith. Uh, it was my privilege to see, to witness uh, Judith's process. It was great knowing other artists' uh, process, how she approaches and how she takes notes. is the best. She did a, a great work for our group. Um, Marina kept encouraging us on, on experimenting. I tried a lot of, of new materials. I didn't succeed at, at last, but we, do, we did try to, to do different things and, and develop our skills, and finally, I I I stayed with my paper cut. Uh, I try to do a painting that is um, the inner garden root. Um, I tried to make that on on, on canvas with a felix, and it didn't work out. So I uh, I stayed with with my color pen and watercolors. It came out great. I liked it a lot. And the important thing for me in this mentorship was um, learning how to uh, convey feelings on my work. Um, I didn't plan it, and I turned out making three, three pieces. One depicts family, the, the other one depicts uh, my sister, and the other one is me, the greenhouse. And I'm very pleased with, with the results. I thank Marina and I think Judith in the process. It was just beautiful to see the way, like from, you were always at this very polished work. And then when you started talking about your process, you were so emotional and we're like, oh no, but the work is, is the emotion is not coming through in how beautiful the work is, you know? And then slowly towards the weeks, you, you started adding more and more layers and it just became so beautiful. And they were very difficult weeks. I had a lot of work. I was um, 
the pandemic was um, playing a toll on me. It, they were very, very hard weeks, and you were so, so supportive. I'm very, very thankful. <laughs> Probably yeah, I, I remember when I first, uh, when uh, the set you first uh, showed us the, the, the piece that you made with the roots and the trees, yeah, um, I, I just felt that it was so emotive, you know, there was so much emotions, and then you said you're having this imaginary conversation with your mother, uh, and then you were thinking about your family, and then you converted these into colours, you know, I, I just so appreciated that you, you have reached very deep inside of you to bring that out. It's beautiful. Yes, it was very, it was very emotional when we shared uh, with you and Marina, there were tears involved. Oh. <laughs> very emotional person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing. So who wants to go next, ladies? The thing is that Lisette has so much within her, mm. but she's kind of scared or a little bit afraid of, of, of uh, showing it or, and I said to her, you don't have to make it l l legible. You can use your words in an illegible way mm. and still convey your emotions and feelings and people will guess, they won't know it literally, what yeah. are you, what your feelings are. Mm. So uh, I think that helped a little bit to, let it go to to put it on paper in and and, and yes. cut it on. Yes. And of course, her thing, like also like Judy, they have this uh, knowledge, awesome knowledge about technique, and uh, that is something that really helps a lot in the process of creation. When mm -hmm. you, when technique doesn't get on the way, when technique is something that you have resolved way before so when you're emotional and when you're wanting to convey a message and when you want to say something you're not you're not you're already struggling with a feeling you can't be struggling with a technique with a paper with the colors with a tick that turns into a, a disaster i remember clearly you told us a quote i don't remember from who is that quote that you have to be trained that when uh, emotion or ideas struck you're ready to do them. Yes, that was said by um, Donna Jackson in one of his conferences uh, for the San Francisco Friends of Calligraphy. Uh, there he said he has, he was trained what he did because somebody asked him where, where, how does it, what happens with inspiration? What, how do you find inspiration? And he said, I just train myself and inspiration finds me when I'm ready. And, 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 and inspiration finds you within the tab, uh, when you're in the toilet or when you're walking around the garden, anywhere. You just, you just know it and you rush to your studios and grab your tools and start working like the Sumia painters did. Uh, so, but you have to be trained. You have to have the knowledge. And well, she, these two ladies are so trained, are so uh, committed, and they have worked so hard in exactly in developing um, their techniques that when I came in, in this dance, I, I, they were ready. It was the right moment to start speaking through art, through the work. So I just helped them to have their voice, but they were, they were in the right moment. And they were prepared. And, and mm -hmm. just like uh, Judy, the, uh, like uh, Lisette is, her work is exactly as she looks like. And that is something I love. There is a, um, you still are you with your uniqueness, with your strengths and your weaknesses and your, the good and the bad is there, and that is what makes it original and unique. It's just you, identity. And her work is just, if you see her, if you could stand uh, in front of her, I don't, I haven't been in touch with her physically, but I, I just know it, not yet, <laughs> but I just know it. it, it it's, 
It's the way she looks, the way in which her hands are made, her hair is made, the way in which she dresses. I think I know her. And I know her through her work. That's very precious. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's lovely. So, uh, Arati, you want to go next? Okay, I mean, um, Marina, your group, you you guys, you know, are, are tugging at some part of me, which I generally <laughs> don't get out. I am not a very emotional person. Um, but I remember the day that uh, <laughs> Dorothy called me. And uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so You're an emotional <laughs> I generally am when I'm alone in the bathroom somewhere. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I remember when um, Dorothy called me. Um, I was not in the best of um, um, in 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 state or whatever you you know mental state, and. Uh, it was, it was like, you know, the pandemic, I don't know if it was because of the pandemic, it was um, out of my mind of, you know, what am I supposed to do? I was um, like, you know, like, like it's there on my uh, write up that, you know, I have always been a corporate warrior. I've known nothing, but, you know, um, be there and uh, uh, probably guide my team and always be there for the team working for you know what my boss has asked me or you know finishing targets and stuff like that I did not recognize myself as an artist so it took me almost two years you know to um, kind of uh, call myself an artist um, I still struggle sometimes but you know the day that Dorothy called I don't know I've met I've never met Dorothy either in person that's that's you know the weird part so um, she calls me and she says, you know, this is what um, I have on my mind. Remember, I spoke to you last year and um, something. So would you like to be a mentee? And, you know, it, it, I was completely zapped. I had no idea what she was talking about. And I was like, okay, this is, I think, somewhere in March last year. And she said, um, would you like to be mentored by Tony? And, you know, literally... Um, you know, I, I lost my balance. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, am I dreaming? Am I, and you won't believe I, I told this to Dorothy that in the morning before her call, when I was meditating and, you know, I was literally begging the universe, show me a sign. I can't go on like this forever. You know, it's either this or that put me on a path. I'm willing to work. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a blessing that uh, probably uh, got showered on me and, um, uh, the wonderful thing that she mentioned was even Tony took your name and she didn't know Tony. Tony didn't know her. They both had a conversation and uh, they both chose my name. And that was like, you know, it was like, I don't know um, what these two ladies have on their mind. Uh, will I be able to do it? So, you know, when, when it started, um, she gave me the news that Sue is going to be the member there, you know, within the trio. So Tony, Sue, and me. And that was another shocker for me. I was like, oh my God, you know, one is Tony, <laughs> the other one is Sue. And I'm trying to find my bearing here. And what am I going to do? I, I can't let these two ladies down. I can't let the world say, why the hell did they choose this lady? You know, who is Arti? You know, why, why Arti in the trio? So it, it was a huge, huge weight on my shoulder when it started. And I did mention that to Tony and Sue that, you know, I've never, I've, I've never really gilded before uh, I took Tony's workshop last year in March. So um, March, I took Tony's workshop. I come back uh, end of March, Dorothy calls me. And I was like, it's, it's just a little bit of gilding that I did. I don't know how am I going to do without physically being present. Um, gilding, as you know, Sue mentioned, it's very technical. And I've seen it. I've, I've been through that four-day, five-day workshop. And I was not sure. I came back. I created disaster after disaster. But I stuck to it. But then, you know, the faith that Tony had in me and the trust that she had in me and 
um uh, like you know uh, sue mentioned again she was she she is so busy i was so hesitant in the beginning to you know message her although during the pandemic i was in touch with her i kept talking to her but then it was all casual right you know how are you doing how is your family doing i hope um we could i could virtually see her you know garden with apples you know and uh, you know her flowers blooming and all of those things we would exchange on whatsapp but this was huge this meant business this was like oh my god <laughs> now this is for real i can't just have you know these little pep talks and you know okay good night you know go back no <laughs> this was like oh my this without tony being physically there to guide me through this how am i going to um begin from the scratch without knowing anything about this traditional art so laying gold is fascinating but then what i did in the last 8 months like i said in the beginning when you know very few of us were present it it changed my life it changed my life so thank you tony thank you so much for having that faith in me and trusting well, me well thank you to dorothy it's, yeah thank you to dorothy yes, for yes. having the idea um and we just came in and and Yeah, I I chose well. I chose wisely. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I made you proud. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. And, of and course, you know, Dorothy. I was looking, I was looking at your Instagram only yesterday, and um, there's a you know these little collections of videos that are along here, whatever you call these. There's one called Gilding Journey. Highlights. Yeah, yeah. highlights. Yeah, I was looking at your gilding highlights, and if you run through those, you'll see your very early gilding experiments, which were not great um, because yeah, that is I the way we all start. And then yeah. you can you can literally see your progress as you went through um, and producing more and more elaborate, more beautifully gilded work. Just astonishing, really. You know. <laughs> yeah, Thank very you. proud. It means a lot. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you, Arthi. Thank you, Tony. Um, I I I'd like to uh, for us to hear from Bakit actually, if that's possible, because Bakit, you she is currently in uh, Yukimi's group, and they have a uh, they they've started I think um not so long ago, and they are preparing to exhibit sometime in the fall, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so maybe Bucky want to share with us uh, what has been happening and how has it been for you in your mentoring journey with you. Um, am I the only? Yes, it seems that uh, I'm yeah. the only mentee present. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> because to teach a class, so she cannot uh, be with us. And I think Tiana is uh, also occupied. Yeah. Okay. So you can represent her. <laughs> Thank you very much for suggesting this uh, journey, and uh, I think we are all very happy in our group uh, and enjoying what we do. I work, as you, as Dorothy said, under Yukimi's uh, mentorship, and we work to together with uh, two more mentees, uh, Nina from the U.S. and Kiana from China. We started about uh, three months ago. And um, we work just like you, I think. We have regular Zoom meetings, email correspondence, and uh, sharing our inspiration, our ideas, and progress of work on Padlet. Um, we also take notes and share notes, uh, sketching ideas. And um, Also, Yukimi suggested that we make a book uh, showing the development of our forms. So our group works towards um, producing some ideas of wearable calligraphy. And uh, at this stage, we understand that we will have a few um, handmade, completely handmade items. And um, maybe we also have um, some patterns for mass production as well. And uh, the first thing we started to work with was sustainability. 
but um, this is quite a serious theme and uh, we stuck with it, I think. We got stuck with it and Yukimi suggested uh, that we develop our own themes that we feel comfortable with to work with. And uh, after discussions, Yukimi suggested uh, us a few themes summarizing what we did uh, before and our actual work. And it all about uh, nature, uh, reborn uh, earth, and, um, and uh, finally calligraphy textures, because what we do is the development of uh, forms and uh, textures, <laughs> yes, calligraphy textures. And uh, it is all experimental. Maybe our work is close to Ma Marina's work as well, but uh, with a different, maybe different uh, aim and approach. And um, we're trying to explore various letter forms being inspired by nature forms and um, thinking about how it can be wearable. So having in mind that it all should be wearable. And uh, we started trying also trying out uh, textile colors, how they um, interact with the textile, how it in, works in, in practice. So, um, and uh, opening of the first online exhibition really <laughs> really raised the bar for us so now we aim as uh, Dorothy said and we fully agree and uh, support this idea that this should be not just uh, <laughs> calligraphy but calligraphy at some new at some higher level and uh, bringing it to art level is what Yukimi would like uh, to do us. <laughs> and I hope we will do at least uh, partly do this. So uh, yes, and um, but uh, since uh, the items would be wearable, I think the results we are going to present will be different from what uh, what was shown at uh, this first opening. So we are not going to produce uh, paperwork and it will be something tangible and ideas of tangible. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, we, we volunteer to be your models. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Very interesting. When I first proposed to Yukimi, you know, would you like to consider leading a group um, to, to consider leading a group that will produce wearables? You know, she was very intrigued and she said, yeah, that would be interesting because Yukimi at the time had been approached by a sporting sports apparel company to design their textiles. You know, to, yeah. to design things for them. Yeah. So I think that she was already thinking along that line. Um, and then there were questions about should it be like mass produced? And then if it's mass produced, then is it art? You know, so, so there are all these kind of very interesting questions. And then if it's mass produced, is it sustainable? And, and then how, how do we have that conversation? Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited, looking forward to, you know, how this group navigates and in the end, what will come out of it? Are, are you all exploring textiles or different kind of wearables? Different kind of wearables. We also think about some accessories like oh, nice. notebook or covers, phone, cell covers, yes, <laughs> and okay. cases, uh, so various accessories as well. Oh, and uh, cool. we think we will have some item that uh, will be common for all of us, like a scarf. So something that will be uniting for us. But uh, okay. everybody, all of us uh, have really different <laughs> uh, forms. Wow, it sounds very exciting. 
so interesting. So we look forward to the uh, exhibition in, um, in the fall. So we'll see. Uh, and then there is also uh, Gemma, her group has uh, started. And on this group is Su Xian and um, Bernice. So Su, you want to share a little bit of excitement with us? <laughs> wow, this is so sudden. I have Sorry? nothing prepared. This is so <laughs> sad. <laughs> Sorry. Congratulations. Um, uh, I guess, actually, as, as I was telling everyone just now, we had some questions that we were supposed to pre answer and share with her tomorrow, which I have not started answering yet. <laughs> so I'm excited to see how I'm going to answer her questions tomorrow. But just hearing like everyone's story and um, their journey, um, I'm like 50 per, 70% excited and 30% um, nervous that I might not be able to produce a thing, a tangible thing. Um, but I suppose the fact that I'm 70% more excited is a, a good sign. <laughs> and Gemma is so sweet. I cannot take it. <sighs> She's really very sweet. Yeah, just very excited to start this, especially with Bernice because She's been through so much, especially last year. I think she posted on her socials that she caught COVID and it's really taking a big toll on her. So I think this is going to be a great journey for, um, for her as well. So I'm really excited to be on this team with her. She's so good. Oh my God, stressed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dorothy, for everything and putting me on the spot right now thank you so <laughs> Sorry, much okay no I it's okay the I spot like this much. <laughs> yeah okay judith asked to go last so uh, maybe before she speaks i will share my i will share a little bit about my own uh journey so of course when i started the art of letters um the idea uh i didn't know at the time that i you know would be diagnosed with cancer so it was like a very big um I don't know. I mean, what? How? How do you say? It? You know, it, it's it's a very big deal breaker, or it's a very uh, shocking kind of discovery. But when I thought about, you know, how I should carry on, I felt that nothing has changed. You know, this this is still my mission. This is still my uh, my passion, and I feel that I should carry on. Uh, and then, in addition to doing the exhibition and starting the mentoring initiative, I wanted to insert myself into the mentoring process so that I can understand how the mentees feel. Um, and I think that, you know, having gone through it myself, I will be able to support in a more tangible way. I will kind of like understand the stresses or the difficulties. Um, so like, in a way, what Adi said, it kind of resonated with me because I have, I've always loved art, you know, even as a child, I love colors, I love uh, uh, textures, but I always felt that I wasn't good at it, you know, so, so I came into this mentoring initiative with a lot, a lot, a lot of mental blocks, you know, there will be this very loud voice of a critic saying, who gives you the right, right, and, 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 and how, how can you you know, who are you to produce art and, and you know, who are you to, to do this or why would people care about what you produce and so on. Uh, and there was a lot of negativity in my mind. So having Eleanor was such a blessing for me because she's very, very encouraging. She'll look at the things that I scratch, you know, chicken scratching. Say, oh, Dorothy, that's beautiful. <laughs> and like, ah, Eleanor, <laughs> you're just being very kind. I suppose that, um, you know, with her encouragement, she would tell me things like, you, you just have to keep at it and it only gets better from here. You know, just, just keep at it. And, and that, that really, uh, it put some metal into my spine, you know, and it gave me the courage to, to carry on. So when I first started, I was doing a lot of uh, explorations, like what kind of background can we stand ink, you know, what watercolors or acrylic gouache and so on. So she encouraged me to do a lot of exploration. And then I was producing a lot of, you know, just like papers and textures and colors uh, and trying out different things, you know, whether I like the scripts and so on. So, so she, she was mainly, um, yeah. And I also did some 
like paper cuttings. Uh, so Eleanor was looking at all my uh, explorations without judgment, nothing, you know, zero. So I was also uh, practicing merging different kinds of, blending different kinds of fonts, trying to get my script uh, up to scratch, you know, exploring colors and so on. So the breakthrough kind of came uh, when she saw this, these are my test pieces. And basically I was exploring uh, Arctic textures and techniques, uh, but on paper. So when I showed Eleanor that, okay, this is what I'm exploring. And she immediately said, uh, you know what, this can be a piece on its own. And then that was how it kind of developed into, into that very gaudy, <laughs> colorful piece that I did. Um, and when I, when I first produced that, I was very, very unhappy with it. Uh, and I remember telling Nicole and Eleanor, I said, I feel that it's very gaudy. You know, I, I'm, I don't normally gravitate towards such strong and loud colors. I like things to be more neutral and muted. Um, but then, you know, their perspective was like, you know what, Dorothy, for somebody going through so much, you know, your, your piece uh, speaks of life and vibrance. It speaks of joy and celebration. And for them, you know, looking from the outside in, it was something very remarkable. So I thought, okay, I think I gave it a chance, you know, I tried to like tidy it up. Uh, so out of that exploration came the piece that I did, uh, which I call Unscared. Um, basically that I'll pass through the waters and not drown, pass through the fire and not burn. Uh, and then earlier on, I also had this idea about like we just exploring the words never. Because, you know, for us, never is a very negative word, you know. And uh, but I wanted to focus on how it can also be positive. Because you know, if I say I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, the word never is so strong, it, it adds so much weight to that promise. You know, so when I told Eleanor, I said, you know, I would like to uh, do like a three the three series about the word never. And her first response to me was, well, you know, I feel that never is very negative. Yeah, but, but when I shared with her the piece that I did and my thinking behind it, she was immediately uh, supportive. You know, so, so for me, Eleanor has been like a very good sounding board and a very good um, source of, I think, encouragement. Uh, to, to tell me that I can do something when I felt that I couldn't, you know, or, or to, to allow me to explore and say, why don't you try this? You, know, you, you can do a piece like this and then why not try that as well? So in the end, um, I felt that you know, I, I didn't want to disappoint her. You know, I wanted to uh, just be very diligent and produce whatever I could. And while I was going through, you know, producing all the pieces, one of the side effects of my chemotherapy is that I, I lose the feelings in my fingers. I cannot feel my fingers. <laughs> I cannot feel my fingers or my toes. So it was very hard to uh, sometimes to write, grab a pen or, you know, to manipulate things. Uh, but I, I kind of feel that it's important for me to push this through. I, I have to produce, you know, I have to push myself uh, and I have to do whatever I can uh, to produce whatever pieces I can, because this expresses, this, this expresses, it, it kind of encapsulates a season in my life that is so important, so significant. Uh, and I'm so, so glad that I, I, I did. I didn't give up. I didn't just say, okay, forget it. I cannot feel my hands, right? So I cannot write or paint or whatever. Uh, and I, and I think that even though, I mean, I may not have produced like the best works, but I did it with my best effort. I put everything into it, you know, all my heart is in it. And uh, some of the pictures that I painted, some of the backgrounds that I painted, I actually painted them using my hair. <laughs> because, you know, as a result of chemotherapy, right, I lose my hair. So I went to see my hairdresser and then she, uh, I said, you know, uh, Coco, I'd like to, can, is it okay if I save some of this? You know, and then she said, yeah, yeah, I keep for you, I keep for you. So she gave me a bag and then we, we stored some of the hair. And I actually went to YouTube and figured out how to uh, make these bigger brushes. And they really work very well. 
they work very well. They have very good, uh, they, they hold a lot of pain and they snap back, you know, to shape. And I'm very pleased with it. So, so yeah, that has been, you know, my journey. And of course, for me, I feel that uh, the, the whole exhibition, all these uh, mentoring relationships that are formed, uh, all that has been so enriching for me. Um, and I think it, the, 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 the journey has been amplified because of the, I mean, the health challenges that I had. You know, it, it, just, it just made everything even more significant than it would have been if it had been just like a normal day. So I'm very, very thankful, very grateful. I've had this uh, journey. So when you when you see our pieces, I think what is precious to me is uh, it represents more wants to have one of my brushes. <laughs> yeah, Ken. So it represents um, our lives. You know, it represents who we are and a, a piece of our journey. So I think that this is what makes the art so precious. Right, like like Lisette, you know, or uh, Nicole, you know, you processing your family relationships, or even Judith, I would like to own a piece of that, because if I purchase your art, I have a piece of your life, I have a piece of your story, and I keep a piece of you with me, uh, and you know whether or not next time you become famous or whatever, this is this is who you are, and I, I want to save that for myself, you know, I want to share in that part of your life, so I think that uh, this is. This is what makes the art so precious. Uh, and I, I encourage you to be, I encourage you to continue to produce, you know, to, to continue to, to, to be um, brave and to share your life with people. Uh, whether or not, at this point, it may be, you look at your art and you think, ah, you know, I have a long way to go. But it's a part of your journey, you know. And there will be people who want to share that journey with you. There will be people who want to, to save that as a memory for you and with you. So I, I really um, treasure this, this experience that we've had together. Yeah. So yay, thank you everyone. Okay, so now over to you, Judy, because you wanted to be last to go. <laughs> there's, there's a reason why I want to be last because I was telling Dorothy, we've heard so much from her as an organizer, but we haven't heard her own mentee journey for a very, none of us have heard that really. And I wanted to give her that experience because it's, it's, she's such an integral part of this project and of this mentorship, right? So I wanted her to share as well. And also, I think, thank you for sharing, Bakit and, and Susian, about the starting of your journeys because what I wanted to share about my own journey ties in and hopefully can help you a little bit. Um, one of the biggest things about the journey for me was that when there were a lot of times we had about 17 sessions and there were a lot of times when we were lost and tired and frustrated. So we would turn out to the session and we'd say, Marina, we spent the week doing something and it didn't work, you know, and we'd be so tired, we'd, we'd be upset. And one thing Marina did for us is that um, she would celebrate our mistakes for us. Oh. So, so there was once when um, I did a 1.2 by 1.2 meter piece. It was very big. It was a spiral piece. And I, it didn't work. I, I wanted to do, do a big scale. I tried different tools. It didn't work. I was very upset. And she told me, you know, now you know about materials. Now you know about weight of materials. Now you know to edit your tools to make this work. And it didn't work. But I'm so happy for you that you learned that. You know, when she said that, I, I, I felt seen. I felt like there was a recognition of the hard work I put into making something that did not work. And, and throughout the journey, you may not know what piece you're going to make, and that's fine. You know, you might see all oh, final works and you're like, oh no, there's a bar is set so high, but don't worry because when we were doing it, believe me, we didn't know what we we're going to do. <laughs> we really didn't. And, and that's the thing. Thing, right marina what she did was she created a safe space for us to just be who we are um throughout a lot of my journey i always felt like i had too many ideas i loved collage i love illustration i love graphic design i love paper cut i love calligraphy i didn't spend enough time on calligraphy i felt like i wasn't a good calligrapher but then when she just took all of that in and she said judith you're trying to do too much 
this is fine who you are, it's fine as you are. Just simplify this idea for this exhibition, one piece, and you can continue to produce works throughout your whole life. You have a whole ex your whole life to execute all the ideas you have, and it's fine. You know, that made me feel seen, and I felt that that was very precious. I hope to share that with everyone, that it's fine to be lost, because Marina taught us that it's fine to keep producing work after the exhibition. You're fine to be lost and keep peddling, you know. <laughs> The, the second thing I wanted to share was actually about the sharings we're having now, the symbiosis, symbiosis sharings, because I've been co-hosting with Dorothy and the conversations we have with all the participants in the sharing session right now, we learn so much from them. Mm -hmm. Like from the previous sessions, you know, like Maria, Tess, um, Loretta, all of them, when we just talk, we exchange ideas. It made me realize that um, the sharings are as part of the symbiosis journey as much as the exhibition and the mentor mentee relationship is. Um, everyone here in this room right now is here because you love writing, you love letters, you love words, and you believe in the power of words to move hearts, right? And, and right now, more than ever, we've all had conversations about isolation. We've all had conversations about what is right and wrong about the pandemic, what is right and wrong about global warming and all these very hard conversations. And in this room, all of us are still trying to use words to heal, trying to use words to build and uplift people. And I think that's the most amazing thing about this experience, you know, that we've created a safe space, whether in our mentor mentee groups or in these sessions, just to talk about beauty of words and how our art, our sharing of our work and art can uplift people. And, and I just want to say, just keep writing, keep sharing your truth and writing because we're all peddling along, along with you. As long as you keep writing, we will keep meeting each other over and over again. And I think that's the most precious thing from this experience. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Thanks, may I Judy. say a word? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, I always keep on uh, saying that this is a two-way situation. If you have uh, wonderful students, uh, they push you harder to be better and you want to give them more and, and they handle that more and you are asked to give more and they inspire you. It's something that energy coming and going forth. But um, I just want to give you a little tip that I've learned uh, not not so long ago, but it helped me uh, very much. If you are an artist, not because you are famous, not because people know you, not because uh, uh, I don't know, collections, museums, or people buy your stuff, or because you have a high price, or because you have a lot of Facebook or Instagram fa uh, fans. You are an uh, you you people are artists because you have been given this gift of showing your emotions and conveying your thoughts and feelings through art. Your tool is is some calligraphic I don't know paper cutting brush whatever the tool it is. It is the way in which you can speak to the world. In, it's the way in which you can convey your emotions, your feelings. Even if nobody in the world can see it, even if everything is within your room on a drawer, you are still an artist. So as soon as you understand that, you will just let yourself go. And the other thing I wanted to say, uh, mainly because of Dorothy's speech, which was really very uh, important and very deep, and and he is and she is doing something really so good. Is I just wanted to read a very short um, quote from a Zen uh, painter, calligrapher from San Francisco. He's called Cash Tanahasi, and he says. The quality of a line is what matters most. 
how deep, strong, or honest it is. It doesn't matter how good or unusual it looks. You can't hide in a line. You are there, whatever line you draw, and you will stay there even when you go somewhere else. If your personality is interesting enough, the line will be interesting. To do this, you have to be fearless. Dorothy is fearless. Orders for you and for my students as well and for everybody in this group. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, we've come to the end of the hour, but uh, does anybody have any other comments or questions about the mentoring uh, initiative? Or, yeah. Natalie, you want to say something? You look like you want to say something. Hi. Hi. Uh, no, I, I just was thinking that something interesting is that dementees usually say that at the beginning they were insecure that they felt fear and that they had doubts about their work they thought that they were not good enough and at the end you see the exhibition and you see accomplished artists that feel super secure about themselves like that's what the artwork reflects like they all um did such an amazing work and it's crazy to see that you know, some people still say like uh, that they don't feel like it was that good. And through our eyes, it is all like top. <laughs> it is all beautiful and amazing. And it reflects a true journey of emotions that each person went through on the last year. And, and that is really inspiring, you know, because I think we all feel that way all the time. Like I get into a class and I see what are uh, the other students and I am like, what am I doing in this class? If every, everyone here is so amazing. <laughs> and then, you know, you finish the class and you realize that you were able to accomplish that as well. Uh, so I think it's a good reminder for all of us that um, that's just the way the journey works. You know, we will always have the insecurities the doubt, but we need to remember that we can do it, that we have the abilities there and we just need to be confident and believe in ourselves and be willing to like expose our emotions and put in the work and the effort and it will get pay off. So thank you for being an inspiration <laughs> to, to all of us. Thank you, thank you, Nathan. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of hard work. Tony, you wanted to say something? No? <laughs> Maria? No, that's unusual, isn't it, for me? <laughs> Not enough coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had plenty of coffee, believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Christina? Freeman? Hi, I... Um, I'm new to the group, so thank you for asking me. Um, I've just been listening quietly in the background. It's just been so inspiring to hear you all go through this journey together. And it, so much value has been added to both the mentees and the mentors themselves, which is just great. And I think what a wonderful idea, what a wonderful shared space. Thank you. Thanks, thank you for sharing. Welcome. Actually, we, we, most of us don't really know each other. We are meeting like online for the first time. <laughs> Very friendly people. And we love, we love to get together. Eric, Eric, do you, are you able to say something? The only guy in the room. Oh, he's not able to speak right now, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, so well, Thank you everyone for coming and for um, yeah, joining in. Eugene, you want to share something? I shouldn't have turned on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that you looked like you wanted to say something, so. <laughs> no, I was gonna wait. No, um, thank you so much for um, sharing, all the sharing by the mentees and the mentors, you know. I think it's been an incredible journey and 
I mean, Dorothy, I, I've been following um, your Instagram and, you know, I'm totally in awe of how you're just <laughs> getting so much done despite everything. It's been so inspiring to us. Mm. Thank you, yeah. everybody. And it was yeah. a really, really awesome exhibition with really beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Yeah, Eugene is a telegrapher in, uh, am I right, KL? Yeah, I'm in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. So we're at neighbors, next door neighbors. <laughs> I have no doubt anyway, yes, thank you all very much for coming and for sharing this journey. I really hope that you will you will not just be like a bystander, but you know, that, that somehow we can get involved with each other and we can be a part. So we we'll find a way uh, to collaborate maybe in some way or go together. I don't know. We'll see. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. You. It thank was you. wonderful seeing all of you. Yes, it thank was. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Bye, everybody. Oh, bye, bye. I'm going bye. to see you. Bye. 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 Bye.